Hello, everybody. This is Wiyong from Prestige Panama Realty. We have a guest from Europe. The place is called Cyprus. His name is Estefanos Nicolao. He's the CEO at Consultix. He's also the vice president of Atari Cyprus Association in the Chamber of Commerce in Cyprus. And he also represents the biggest chamber in the United Kingdom and that of the Manchester of the Middle East, right? Correct. Uh, we... So hi, everybody. Just to introduce myself, like we said, mentioned, my name is Stefanos Nicolaou. I am uh, from Cyprus. Cyprus is a tiny island in the Mediterranean. For those who do not know, we are south of Turkey, east of Greece, west of Israel. And if you blink, you will miss the island. I want to start with what's going on right now, which is the, the coronavirus. Um, how's the economy right now in Cyprus? How, how do you perceive it? Look, um, with regards to the coronavirus, I mean, this is something unprecedented, right? So we don't really know what it means for our future. This, I think, is something which is globally. We are trying to understand how it will impact our lives and how it will change the momentum when it comes to the economy. The economy, as everybody in the world, is quite um, stable. Actually, there's no economy. Let's put it in this way, right? Uh, and the reason is because there is no market. And from the moment that there's no market, there is no economy. What is happening now in Cyprus is that we have a 100% lockdown. 100% lockdown means that all the business are closed. There is also curfew. People cannot actually go out after 9 p.m. And for those that want to go out, there has to be a special um, paper or an SMS for, to go out um, and make like a gymnastics or take the a pet for a walk or something on that level. But to go on a business, you need to have special permission and with a sign from your business in order to be able to go to the office. Now in the office, you have to have all the requirements, the two meters distance between for social distancing. You have to have all the precautions and anything or anybody who actually has the coronavirus needs to be um, quarantined. And that business has to close down. So this is the situation. Okay. Um, for how long you have been in quarantine? We have been in, in quarantine since the 11th of March. Yeah. Uh, personally, I have been going to work normally, going at the same time, living at the same time. But I think my productivity personally has increased 300%. Yeah. But um, from a, a, a country perspective, it is pretty slow, pretty slow. Yeah. And uh, the quarantine has been almost now for a month and 10 days, 11 days. And we are expecting that we will finish the quarantine um, at a more limited, let's say, free approach to the market by the 6th of May, between the 4th and 6th of May. So rather than sending one SMS per day to go out for a couple of hours, you'll be able to do three. So measures will be. Um, let's say slowly, slowly becoming a bit softer, but they will not finish. This is what I understand will happen. Okay. Um, in Panama, right now we have the weekends, Saturday, yep. and Sunday, nobody goes out. And men can only go out on Thursdays and Tuesday. Female can go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But you can only go out two hours when you have to go out. And the way they decide it is with your ID number. The last number of your ID tells you the time you can go out. So in that way, they have control the, the pandemic very well, let's say, compared to other uh, Latin American countries. I have another question. Okay. When the quarantine started, how the people in Cyprus reacted? Do they accept it? 
they want to do it, they didn't want to do it, people still want to escape, what was, what was the thing? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, uh, from um, the Cypriot perspective, I think we did pretty well. Yeah, there was no reactions. Nobody said anything. I could say safely 98% of the population, maybe 99% of the population, took it very, very um, softly or also took it very normal because the Cypriots in nature, because of their history, they have been in similar situations because of the um, being under an empire for a hundred years, being under occupation for many years, but also having the recent economic crisis in 2013, we had similar situations, yeah? So it's part of our DNA um, and it went pretty well. It did, we, I don't see, I didn't see any problem. And I should give a bit of credit to the government because I think the way they have managed the situation and how the decisions were made were very decent. And also they said they would do something on a particular day and they actually delivered. And that's very important for me on how decision making was made. And um, that has to do as well. You know, one of the biggest problems was who's going to pay the salaries for the employees, which I think could be one of your questions coming in a couple of minutes. But just to go to the subject. They said they would deliver the salaries before Easter. Our Easter, the Orthodox Easter, was last week. So um, between the 12th, actually between the 14th and the 16th of April, all the salaries, 60% of the salaries, were transferred to all the employees, which is a big thing, yeah? It gives more confidence. And these measures will be there for the next four months as well. So salaries will be paid 60% by the government. Okay. So... If the government is getting involved and trying to help everybody and trying to give confidence to the economy, when do you really think Cyprus will back, go back to normal, kind of normal, let's say? Again, um, I have analyzed it a lot, we, you know, um, this point, because it's part of my business, I have analyzed it a lot, all right? And for me, um, on a global scale, I see things coming back 18 months from now, okay? 16 to 18 months. And from the Cypriot perspective, because we are an island and, and, and things are a bit slower, um, about 24 months. I see things come back to normal in the way we used to be before the coronavirus. I don't see things coming before that. and for a couple of reasons. Um, one, each country is completely different the way they react to pandemics. Um, not the pandemic as itself, but to such emergencies. The most important thing is the fact that between the societies and what we see across the globe is that in our case, for us, the respect for the elderly, the respect for family, and the respect for a person passing away is different compared to, for example, the Northern Europeans, yeah? So for us, losing one person um, is a big problem and we would rather stay home for a whole month and take care of those people so they don't have, uh, they have more possibilities to live, yeah? Whereas in other societies, they could think that, look, it's better that we become immune to the system or let's say um, a, a become immune to the pandemic, but there will be a lot of losses in the short term, but the economy is more important, yeah? So it depends on what the criteria or what is the determination of each society, what's important. In our case, we did not want to lose people. That was a, a prerequisite. And the economy, is something that will come later and we will figure it out. This is what we made a decision. Now, there's another component though. Our NHS, the National Health System, is not at a level in which it can take a lot of people. So we had to balance that out as well. And we were not ready or we are not ready for any pandemic or anything similar to the pandemic, which means that we, we have seen a lot of limitations in that sector. We didn't have masks, we didn't have gloves, we didn't have all the 
things that we should have had for what was expected because the curve was expecting a lot more people to actually pass on. Today, the numbers are five new incidences and there's no deaths. I mean, we were on average around the 60s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and then we fell down to 20s, now 10, and now we're down at five, five. But remember, we don't have an airport and we don't have tourism now. We don't have anybody in the country. So that, that, that's another, uh, sec another um, let's say, um, point which is very important, right? You don't have people, an influx of people coming to the country. How, how many Cypriots are in the island? Look, um, on the island, the official numbers is, um, and we're talking about the Greek Cypriots, okay, because we have also the Turkish Cypriots, but in the whole island is about a million people, okay? And um, a million people, but we have a floating population of about, um, let's say around tourism is about 3 million per year. So that is a floating population as well, which is quite big, three times more of our population. And we also have a big expat population, which could reach up to 2.4 million. Okay, only in London, um, we're talking about in London, there's about 400 to 500,000 Cypriots there, and there's others in Australia, there's others which go in and out the island, yeah, on an annual basis. So with the habitants that you have right now, how many infected people do you have, or how many deaths you said? Look, at death, we have 11 people, okay? Um, and we have infected people, like today, the, the number was uh, about five. But in total, we had about 670, somewhere there, if I remember well. Yeah, 670. Okay. So the numbers do not seem so high. And we cannot compare with other countries because I'm looking at it from a different perspective. And we had to make slow moves in order to fix problems with NHS. We had to do slow moves because we don't really have the experience of how to manage big emergencies. And I don't believe, culturally wise, if we had 10, 20, 30 deaths of nationals of Cyprus on the same day, it would have been chaos here. We wouldn't have been able to manage that situation. Everybody knows more or less each other, right? So imagine if every day we had the situations which is in other countries across the globe, which people are more like numbers rather than human beings, or if they are, if they are human beings, we are losing those people at big numbers, like 500 or 600 or 700. And that's what we were really afraid because even the, from a governmental perspective, the risk was too high. How can somebody lose so many people in one day, mm. especially on an island, which we have a small population and um, we are not dominant in the world or do not impact the world in any economic or political way, yeah? Okay, L let's say the, the, the pandemia takes longer than expected and then you start having unemployed people is the government ready to help them? Are they going to support on family? How is it going to be in Cyprus? Okay, um, it's a good question. And it's something that we will see. But I think what we're doing now is a bit on the short term, right? And culturally, again, I'm going to the culture, we are a bit of a short term visionaries, not the long term visionaries. So what I'm afraid, and this is what happened, the government could have paid for one month, but they have uh, successfully managed to get a loan which will cover another four months, right? Mm -hmm. After that, there, there has to be gross domestic product. The gross domestic product is 60% um, or the majority, uh, forget the number, the number is wrong, it's not 60%, maybe it's less, maybe it's more, it's tourism, right? There won't be any tourists. In the best case scenario, July end will be when some tourists come to Cyprus. But we won't accept tourists from countries, or rather they will need to be really checked before they can go into public in order to have their holidays, right? So there is also a transition in the tourism. I mean, the hotels need to put the right infrastructure. They have to put the right uh, settings in order for pe to absorb people to come in. So having in mind that there's no tourism and the GDP is going to be impacted high, 
um, the only way to sustain ourselves is from local tourism. Mm. Local tourism will be able to captivate and save the day up to one level in order to support the unemployed. Until now, one and a half months, our unemployment has not gone significantly high because 60%, as I mentioned before, is covered by the government. And the 40%, if the company can do that, will pay the rest. The company cannot pay. It's a negotiation agreement between employees. Yeah? So we can sustain this a bit for four months. We can start growing the economy at a slower rate. Because remember, we shouldn't always look at the negative side of things. We are also saving money. How many households globally today are not spending money, right? Yeah. I did my biggest savings the last one and a half months. Uh, you know? So we're not spending money. We are just saving money. Right? So we have to look at this from a positive perspective. And we have to see the future state. And when I mentioned before, I'm afraid it's a short term. It's because I'm worried if there's no immunity within the society or there is no vaccine or some medical uh, framework in order to sustain this. What's going to happen in November, December, January, February next year? And I believe that's where we could have some problems. Okay. I don't believe the recovery will be done by then. You, you mentioned that you have been more productive. Is yeah. because you are in the house most of the time or is because you have more customers because they need of your technology and your business? Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm not at home. I go to the office. Yeah, I go to the office and the first thing I did is first of all to have my personal sanity. Yeah, I mean, I needed to stay sane in whatever I was doing. So the first thing is to be able to, um, you know, sustain the family in order for them to understand what the situation is and also make sure that they are okay. And not from a health perspective, but also that they're staying home and there's something that we need to do. And secondly, I need to go to work and continue whatever I was doing in the same way I used to do it before. Nothing should change. I should go to work, work as hard as I did before, and try to find you know, what is the silver line in this cloud? And that's what I did. Um, and we transformed some business uh, lines, but we also did more things that we ever did before in the last five years. The last 60 days, actually 44, 45 days, we have established more services or products, uh, marketing campaigns, uh, partnerships, clientele, and even transforming businesses from an online business to an off, from an offline business to an online than ever before. So we had to do this. And it was something that I believed in it, and I still believe in it, of course. But we should keep the momentum going. We should not stop. The difference only is that there's no market for me to go and present to go and talk to people, to go and engage. And usually my business, because we are very diverse in what we do, I need to have a lot of face-to-face -face interactions and I need to also travel a lot, but also I need to convince a lot of people in order to utilize our services like everywhere else in the world, right? Yeah. So this is what, we, this is what happens. Well, that, that's, uh, that's good that you're doing it because somehow when you started your company, it's like when I started my company, because you try to see the future and you see the future is technology. And I mentioned at the beginning that Panama is like Cyprus because similar culture in the way uh, they act with family. We are a small country like you. And they are, the mentality also is like very old fashioned. So yeah. trying to help them with the technology, sometimes it wasn't so easy at the beginning, but now that everything is changing, 
out of being in contact with people now they they try to see things different and that's where you and my company we try to help people because we understand how it's going right exactly my biggest problem we was time wasting okay my biggest problem was even traveling to make one meeting which actually sometimes did not impact in any single way now the fact that i can engage remotely now you're sitting in panama and i'm sitting in cyprus in the other side of the world and we can have a a brilliant conversation but we can actually do business together yeah. we can actually synergize that's a new thing i i used to promote it a lot for the last three years but it's a new thing that people are starting to jump on board i told you guys let's synergize there's no reason for us not to synergize to give a better solution and product and service to the business and that's where the opportunity lies with all this pandemic and this is what i have seen and this is what i'm aiming for so it depends on how you see things but i see a lot of positives out of this a lot of positives and um people uh maybe can appreciate life in a different way but i think if people embrace the technology and also focus on the end result we will do a lot yeah yeah um i, I can also tell you that uh, i have a 3d camera four years ago that i use for real estate where yeah. you, you can navigate the whole house and you can put notes you can put videos inside showing the house virtually and yeah that, that's brilliant and i have seen one real estate in cyprus last week to implement it actually we so it's great i mean i mean that's the thing of how do you like personally i need to see the house physically to be pressed now i can actually vision uh, i mean visualize how that house could be and actually make a decision yeah because yeah. of the technology you're offering yeah and uh, i also offer it to companies like normal company retail uh, but they couldn't see the they couldn't see in the moment how they could set, use it to sell stuff but right now if they would have done it two years ago they will still be open because yeah. when you go virtually to the store you can talk to the customer with the video show the clothing tell the price click here and then you go to the cart yeah and yeah and now now the people is like hey i remember that you told me once this stuff do you want to check it out but well time just came here by force and our job your job my job is to help people exactly exactly and we have to think on their behalf right so i guess um thinking on their behalf means that you first of all have to be very positive so if you're not a positive person in order to be able to stand beyond the problem and convince them that this is the best solution for your business then it won't sell Does yeah that make sense yeah, yeah. Makes sense. well it's a nice conversation that we're having we are I, i like to keep it in 30 minutes i i want to close with a personal question yeah if you have to take something positive positive out of the whole negative of the pandemic what it will be and what do you recommend businesses to focus on in the future yeah good question um i think the positive side of things is that we can syndicate things syndication and pulling services together to impact better to the clients is where i see the positive side of it so um, it's more targeted look uh, i mean for businesses even though in a way they are forced to communicate and even to have virtual meetings is a starting point right and that's why I, um, i'm saying that if you manage to utilize the technology around you correctly you can actually do more and sell more than what you were doing before 
but it needs better preparation and it needs more process oriented approach when it comes to the way you cater and technology for example i was talking to you before we went live with this recording um that different technology is there not only to communicate but actually to measure where you stand and it could be from a social media perspective it could be from a branding perspective it could be from a market research perspective so uh, for better decisions to be made so i think the technology in the long term will help every single business if you use it correctly of course and if you have the right tools to make better decisions for how you will move and the second thing is like what i mentioned syndicate services or syndicate solutions in order for you rather than having many people that probably could take a lot of time actually focus on what the deliverable should be to the client rather than anything else so i downsized about three four people in our organization some wanted to leave some found a new job others okay uh, had children at home okay and they are being paid by the government so they have to stay at home but what i have noticed is that we are more productive and we can actually deliver better to clients not because those people left because we syndicated a lot of the things that we used to do before and we used to waste a lot of time and we were forced to do that because we're using the technology well excellent yeah. excellent comments hopefully many people in panama will see the interview and get another perspective from the other side of the world so Definitely. thank you very much stefanos for your time and You're welcome anytime hopefully we can meet again if we have more questions here from our followers all right for sure anytime we thank you so much all right good night bye bye good night Gracias por ver nuestro video. Síganos en nuestras redes sociales. Si tienes preguntas, escríbenos. Si quieres saber algo diferente para otros.